Have you heard about Yarn Lane, a TV show dedicated to knitting, crochet and all things yarn, bringing you demonstrations from our expert guests as well as the latest tools. And find out what's coming up on the show by following us on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe to our email newsletter or visit the programme guide on our website at www.yarnlane.com. Hi, I'm Helen from Woolly Chic. I design knitting and crochet patterns and I also teach crochet in Hitchin, Hertfordshire, where I live. My mum taught me to knit and crochet when I was a teenager, but it wasn't until my children were little that I picked up a crochet hook again and literally became hooked. And I haven't stopped crocheting and now knitting uh, ever since. I began designing about eight years ago and started selling my patterns as part of kits, putting together my designs with British wool some of which comes from my family's sheep farmed in Pembrokeshire, Wales. I love the fact that with a simple fibre like wool, you can create something really beautiful and unique, uh, like garments or handmade accessories, um, cushions, blankets. Yeah, the possibilities are limitless. Um, I'm also passionate about teaching crochet and passing on the skills that I have learnt. I'm really looking forward to being part of Yarn Lane TV and sharing some tips and tricks with you and I really hope that you enjoy watching. In need of a crafting fix? There are so many ways you can watch Sewing Street and Yarn Lane. Sewing Street is live from 8am to 1pm every day on Freeview 72 and Sky 670. Alternatively, if you want to watch us on a tablet or on the move, you can tune in on our YouTube channel, the Sewing Street app, or the websites at www.sewingstreet.com and www.yarnlane.com. You can watch past shows on Sky 670 from 1pm every day, as well as our YouTube channel, the app, and our website. Yarn Lane is on from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. Visit our programme guide to find out when and what's on. So you never have to spend a minute without us. We know that shopping online can be a confusing and sometimes daunting task, and sometimes all you want to do is talk to a human being. Well, our family-run customer service team are on call 24-7. They're full of friendly, warm-hearted individuals, all trained to make your shopping experience as easy and as enjoyable as possible. And not only will they take your order, they will also help and guide you on your shopping journey, so you never miss out. Have you heard about all of the different ways you can shop with Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? You can either shop on our websites, sewingstreet.com and yarnlane.com. You can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. For Sewing Street, call 0800 001 4433 and for Yarn Lane, call 0800 4700 600. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app, onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street or Yarn Lane in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! Follow Sewing Street and Yarn Lane on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. Are you a fan of Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? 
Just search Sewing Street Fans and Yarn Lane TV Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. It's that simple. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing and yarn community. See you there! Missed the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favourite demos over and over again. We also have lots of great content exclusive to our YouTube pages, such as product demonstrations, troubleshooting videos and so much more. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. We know that shopping online can be a confusing and sometimes daunting task, and sometimes all you want to do is talk to a human being. Well, our family-run customer service team are on call 24-7. They're full of friendly, warm-hearted individuals, all trained to make your shopping experience as easy and as enjoyable as possible. And not only will they take your order, they will also help and guide you on your shopping journey, so you never miss out. heard about Yarn Lane, a TV show dedicated to knitting, crochet and all things yarn, bringing you demonstrations from our expert guests as well as the latest tools. And find out what's coming up on the show by following us on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe to our email newsletter or visit the programme guide on our website at www.yarnlane.com. Hi, I'm Helen from Woolly Chic. I design knitting and crochet patterns and I also teach crochet in Hitchin, Hertfordshire, where I live. My mum taught me to knit and crochet when I was a teenager, but it wasn't until my children were little that I picked up a crochet hook again and literally became hooked. And I haven't stopped crocheting and now knitting uh, ever since. I began designing about eight years ago and started selling my patterns as part of kits, putting together my designs with British wool, some of which comes from my family's sheep farmed in Pembrokeshire, Wales. I love the fact that with a simple fibre like wool, you can create something really beautiful and unique. Uh, like garments or handmade accessories, um, cushions, blankets, yeah, the possibilities are limitless. Um, I'm also passionate about teaching crochet and passing on the skills that I have learnt. I'm really looking forward to being part of Yarn Lane TV and sharing some tips and tricks with you and I really hope that you enjoy watching. Hello, welcome to Yarn Lane. My name is John Scott. Uh, we are the only shopping channel totally utterly dedicated to everything to do with yarn, whether it be knitting or crochet or anything like that, and you are loving it. There are three ways you can get in touch. 
The first way is you can send us an email, studio at yarnlane.com. The second way is on the Facebook Live, which I'm on now, if you want to come onto the Facebook Live, Yarn Lane TV. Or, of course, you can go to the website. Now, I need to tell you a lot about the website, because first of all, if you go to the main website, yarnlane.com, uh, click on Watch the Show Live. Clicked. And then you'll see to the right-hand side, you'll see me, sadly. And then to the right-hand side there, you've got send message to studio. You can write a quick message there, and that will come through to Hannah, the producer. And she will, hello, love you. She's been very familiar already today. Then you can scroll down the page, you see. Now, in, at the moment, everything is on pre-order. As we introduce it to you, it will become into two columns. There'll be the show deals and the pre-order. So that's everything that's up in this next hour. Some of which we won't show live on air, but there's the lovely kits. Now, I need to warn you that the kits are selling. The Dreamcatcher kits are selling already. Um, uh, and also, the other thing you need to know now, nothing to do with today's show because we're not selling yarn on its own. But whilst you're on this website or that website, um, it's 30% off all yarn until the 15th of August. You just need to put the code YARN30 in. So yarn is not kits or anything like that. If you go to the website, there's a section for yarn. There you go. You look at yarn. So there's four ply, Aaron, all the different sorts there. Hannah likes to show you this one because there's Christmas ones. There's Holly Berry. There's Holly Berry. Wasn't she in a Bond film? Fairy lights and candy cane. They're the Christmas ones. But it's not just. It's not just. Um, four ply, it's Aaron, it's all the different yarns that you saw there. It's 30% off everything that's in a ball of yarn or a ha hank, hunk, what's it called? Hank. hank of yarn. Hank of yarn. I can't say that word at all. I've got hunks on the brain today. <laughs> anyway, 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 so I just want you to know about that because that, that's going on for a few days. Let me, well, say hello to Helen first of all. This is Helen. Hi. Hello, there Hi. she is from Woolly Chic. <laughs> You'll see more about it. We'll talk more in a second. I need to just tell you the kits that are available to today, uh, for you today. We've got a beginner kit, right? So if you want to make this really lovely bag, what you do is the beginner crochet to make the, the actual mandala. And then you get this, you do get this, so you can attach it to the bag and make your own little tote bag there. It's cute, isn't it? So this is how it comes. That's how it's finished. This is how it comes to you when you buy it. Now, because this is a beginner kit, you do get a crochet hook in here, but you get all your yarns. Oh, now this is a different colour to that one. Yeah. <laughs> there might be random colours. Oh, random colours. Random colours. Right, let me move these out of <laughs> the way. I, I don't mind. I don't mind, but beautiful. You get four of those. Then in here, you get a four millimetre hook. And most importantly, well, then you get the, now this is all ethically sourced, isn't it? Yeah. the right words, ethically sourced, right? Instructions galore in here. You can't really go wrong, can you, look? In fact, this is the one I should really start with, isn't it, look? <laughs> so there's all your instructions and everything on there. Learn to crochet mandalas, beautiful colours. And they're all going to be beautiful colours. Now, are all of these yarns from your family sheep? Some of them will be. Okay. Some of them will be, and some of them are from West Yorkshire Spinners. spinners. So some so, of them are blue faced Leicesters. Yes, yes, that's right. Yeah, so they are um, all British. So some just sort of general British breeds of sheep, uh -huh. and some from my family's sheep in Pembrokeshire, which are uh, Paul Dorsets. A pardon? Paul Dorsets. Oh, they Paul Dorset sheep. Oh, yeah. and it's all, this is all 100% wool, is it? All 100% wool. All 100% wool. Beautiful, a lovely gift to give somebody, isn't it? And then, of course, because you get the bag as well, you then attach your mandala to the bag here, and you've got your lovely little tote bag. So that's twenty four ninety nine. Do you know what? That's a lovely little gift to get somebody, isn't it? Who you think that might want to start crochet, well, like me, saying, "Oh, I should start that. I should start that." What a lovely way to start. There's your kit. Now look again, random colours again. So it's four <laughs> random colours. But all I can tell you is, I've seen three of them now, and they're all exquisite colours because <clears throat> are they dyed in this country as well? Yes, yeah, dyed in Yorkshire. In Yorkshire, in Yorkshire. Beautiful, aren't they? Really lovely colours. So that's your beginner kit for £24.99. <clears throat> Excuse me, you don't need to get anything else. It's got everything in there, it hasn't has it? Everything. everything, your yarn, your crochet hook, your instructions, your bag, everything is in there. Perfect for beginner. And then you can watch this show back on YouTube when you get yours home and you're able to see where to go and everything like that. Right now, then today's show is all about these two brand new dream catchers. Look, I've never seen a dream catcher like this. My dream catchers look like nets with feathers hanging <laughs> from them. 
I, you see, these could be dream catching, but how lovely. I like, I like this one. This is my favourite one. But how lovely to have those. They, they, now, I'll explain everything. This one, hasn't got, this one hasn't got a butterfly bee on it, but it will have. You've got a thing in there. I think they're just lovely decorations. Do you know what I mean? Just for around your house and things like that. I wouldn't be at all surprised if Karen from Wigan came in and got these and decorated her house with them. Two different colourways. The pattern is the same, isn't it? Yes. But yeah. they're just two. Now, these aren't random. These are, prop, these are fixed colours, yes, aren't they? Yes, yes. Again, you... oh yeah, sunflower. I was going to say, aren't they both sunflowers? Yeah, sunflower, is that one called a daisy, daisy there then? Yeah. yeah. Right, so sunflower, you get, you... oh, beautiful. Got... Oh, the, the, the sunflower that Hannah bought me had five flowers on it. This week it's just gone, I've given up the ghost to live now. It's oh. just given up now. Right, so that's your sunflower. So you get the golden, gorgeous golden yellow there. And then the, now the brown looks like it's got, um, a melange of browns in there. It's not just a solid brown, is it? And then you get your purple for your butterflies. Oh, you suppose you make your bee out of the yellow there, don't you? Lilac, you know, pinky, pinky. Oh, look, beautiful colours, aren't they? Right, and your instructions. I'm leaving that bit to the end. And all of your instructions there to make the sunflower dream catcher mandala crochet pattern. But you most probably be thinking, well, what's that there? What's it? You get that in there, look. <laughs> no, no, uh, Halo. Now, this comes in the kit. Obviously, if you then make one and think you want to make lots of them, these are available. Do you sell these? Uh, no, not. No, no. so you, I just don't want to sell. You get them from florists, yes. can't you? Because they're for. They're florist wreath wires. Wreath wires, florist wreath wires. So now, obviously, you get one in your kit. And I was just thinking, if you sold them, I'd send them to you to buy them because we <laughs> don't we don't sell them either. But they're florist wreath, wreath wire kits. Yeah. So you can do, do your own again once you've made the kit. If you love it, if you want to make three or four of them, and you, well, you could just buy three or four kits because they're only $24.99. So that, now this one, you don't get a crochet hook in it. So I need for this one... A three and a half millimetre and a three millimetre. A three and a half millimetre and a three millimetre hook uh, because the flower is... A three and a half. And the animals and, and, yeah. are the three. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Right, so that's your sunflower one. Then the daisy one is absolutely identical, except this time you get that beautiful creamy ivory white there. And you get the golden yellow to go in the middle, it's running around all over the place. And then I won't get them out. You get the same colours for your butterflies and the stripes on your bumblebee. You still get your, your um, wiry thing and you still get your instructions. You need to supply your own hooks for that one though. There it is, isn't it? Lovely. That golden colour in the middle is a really beautiful colour, isn't it? So that's that one, that's that one. Hang on, what have I done with this? Oh, I've put it in there. <laughs> right, okay. Now, I'll do, do uh, this very quickly, because this is new, I've not seen this before. This lovely little, now I've seen these owls on cutting mats and things like that before, but look, they've got all the crochet hooks, shapes and sizes you could wish for. So. Uh, that's skinny, skinny, that one. What number's that one then? Even with my new glass on. Uh, two. Go, that's a two is the smallest. And it goes up to a ten. Crikey. That'll make chunky crochet, wouldn't it? So if you do need your, what was it? Four and four and three, a half. Three and a oh, half. Three, three and a half. Seventeen ninety nine. They're lovely, aren't they? I've not seen uh, that wooden ones like that altogether. I've used to, used to seeing the zing ones, the colourful ones. Anyway, that's seventeen ninety nine. Again, I know I shouldn't say it. Christmas gift idea. Christmas gift idea. Lovely little tag on there. Right. That's all I'm going to show you for now because Helen's going to show us how to do the beginner one and then how to do a sunflower and a daisy. That's right, isn't it? Yep. Right. Okay. Let's make a start then. So we're starting off with this one learn to crochet mandala now if you didn't want to you don't need to put it on the bag i suppose no, you can no. do whatever you because i think that would look nice on a table with a candle in yeah. the middle of it sort yeah. of thing so where do we start what do we do okay so just to say in in the kit there is a guide to learning um to crochet mandalas right. and a mandala is basically well it was like the old-fashioned doily wasn't yes, it yes, but yes. then mandala is like the sanskrit 
word for circle. So it's oh, anything it? that's crocheted in the round. And it's supposed to be very meditative and calming. Mm -hmm. And just the process of making a mandala is supposed to be quite spiritual. Uh -huh. And I think there's lots of connections with crochet um, with that side of it. So if you can crochet a granny square, this is even easier. Oh, so fantastic. It is a, because there are no corners. So you're, you're crocheting in the round and you start in the middle. So in the kit, there, is, um, there are two patterns for mandalas. Oh, so okay. one where you can crochet just in the round. Yeah. So just uh, all the way around and it shows you how your stitches will look if you put your hook in different places. So this is just one where the, um, the hook goes into the top of the stitches, but it also shows you in the pattern how you can create different effects. Okay, so I've it's a, a proper guide. Okay, I've got a quick question. Yep. See on the third, can you show the, 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 the third, like where your left finger is? Uh huh. No, get this right, one. that one. This one. Why is that one sticking out a bit more? Because that's the join. Maybe <laughs> maybe I haven't joined it. There's probably oh, sorry. A, I thought it was a special spiritual <laughs> thing. You can no. say, oh, John, that's where the spirit comes in. Exactly but, no. that. It's not yeah. a mistake at all. <laughs> oh, sorry. I didn't mean to <laughs> no, that. no. But that's actually that you've, you've highlighted it because this is the back. Oh, well, <laughs> it might turn help it, if you showed If I turn it over, look, you can't see oh, it so much. So there we that's go. That's beautiful. So are they all the same stitch? That's all the same stitch. So this is a treble crochet said, stitch. Like and, stitches, yeah, I and I, I teach UK uh, crochet Good. terms. Yeah. So, uh, so it's a, a UK treble stitch. Yeah. So, but what I wanted to show you, because last time I was on the show, I think I demonstrated how to make this mandala in the very first launch show. Oh, okay. When I had this kit and it sold out straight away. Yeah. So I'm not going to demonstrate how to make this one. But I'm we going can tell to... you the date. We can tell you the date for that oh, one. Oh, yes, yes. So yeah. that's the, I think it was the 2nd of November. 2nd of November on yeah. YouTube, Yarn yeah. Lane on YouTube. So I'm going to just show how to make um, this one, right. which is the the same as the stitch diagram, the chart yeah. that you'll see printed onto the bag, onto the tote bag, yeah. and onto the front front of the pattern. Okay, now in the uh, when you get the kit, can you make one or the other? You can't make but there, that one and that no, one. No, there's enough wool in the kit to make both. Oh, fantastic. So there's loads of wool and it does go quite far. Brilliant. So uh, Brilliant. and the reason why I've put in um, to the kit a ball of this uh, self-striping yarn yeah. is because you've then got four colours oh, in this course. ball yeah. along with the three colours of yarn yes, uh, which of uh, two, two of which are from my uh, family's sheep in oh. Pembrokeshire so uh, so there's a really good sort of combination yeah, of yeah, colours to choose the, from. Yeah the multicoloured one yeah. in there and the pinks but, and the but candies. They, but it might be a, <clears throat> a, a bit random. That's fine. Right, right. Well also the, when you dye a sheep's wool it's not always the same colour anyway. Is no it? no that's fun. right. Okay so let's get started. <coughs> so the first thing to do is put your slip knot on your uh, on your hook. So yeah. I'm just going to make my slip knot by passing a loop through and pulling the tail. Oh, everybody down. does it differently, don't they? They do. Yeah. Everybody has their own little way of doing a slip knot, and well, most things holding the yarn, holding the hook. You know, there's no right or wrong way of of doing it. Uh -huh. But um, so we're going to start in the middle, and we're going to start with a circle. So we're going to make. First, we're going to do six chains. So that's hook, uh, hook the yarn and pull it through the loop. And we'll do that six times. Uh -huh. Three, four, five, six. And then to make it into a ring, we then want to put the hook into that first chain that we made. Yeah. So we literally just done six chains and that's six it. Six chains, that's it. That's uh -huh. the beginning. And then you're just um, pulling the yarn through the stitch and the loop that's on your hook uh -huh. and that is a slip a slip knot. okay okay and then to make the stitches you're then going to be putting your hook into the middle of that ring okay so you're not taking anything to the top of any of the chains they all go through the yes, central ring. yes and right. that's why it's a really easy project for beginners yeah. because you're not putting your hook into any fiddly stitches no you're just actually putting them straight into the middle of a big hole perfect so we start off with two chains yeah and in crochet you always start with um, what we call turning chains and they will be of different heights depending on your stitches that you're making uh -huh. but um, in this instance we're starting with two chains because that's the height of a double crochet stitch yeah. so then 
I'm going to make 15 double crochet stitches all into this middle okay. where I'm putting my hook straight in, yeah. catch the yarn and pull it through the hole. I've got two loops on my hook, right. yarn around the hook and pull through both of those loops right. and that's a double crochet stitch. And with the tail, I'm just going to crochet over the top of this tail as well right. and then I won't need to sew it in. I won't actually need to put it on mm -hmm. a wool needle and, uh, and sew it in. So if I'm just sort of laying the tail over the top of my stitches, right. I can then so just... So you go through, yeah, hang on, so, so you go through, So I'm going yarn in over... And catch the yarn from behind, yeah. pulling it through the centre. So the you've got center, two loops on Two loops, hook. yarn around the hook and pulling it through those two loops. Okay, now you can make those quickly. All right, I can just whi whiz on. Yeah. But now I've lost count. Three, four, and five, there's, there's a lot six. Of, there's a lot of counting with um, with crochet. How do you, because I don't know how people do it watching the telly and with people chattering in the room, because surely you must keep, like now, yeah. you're trying to count and I'm talking to you. Well, I'm not counting. What I'll do is I'll show people then how then to count. count the stitches once, you, oh, okay, brilliant. once you've gone all the way around. But if you're doing a really difficult one and you're sitting at home and there's people yabbering or the telly's on or the... Yeah, no, I know. The, you need a sign, a badge that says, don't talk, talk to, me. to me, I'm <laughs> counting. Yeah, so so I've just done a few here. So yeah. if we turn it to the side, we can see that these are a series of Vs mm -hmm. and that's how you count your stitches. So I'm just going to count back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Hey, I'm good. There yeah. we go. That's how many I needed to do. Fifteen... 15 stitches right. and, and did you catch your tail in all of those as you I've went caught round? them yeah so yeah. now so what I will do now is I'll just join this with a slip stitch into that first chain that I made and that is a bit fiddly but there we go right and then is with that the, like not in, is that like a knotting that, off thing it is yeah. well it, no it's a slip stitch is is uh, it has no height it just joins right. so you just join oh, so it's two, like sewing them together yeah yeah that's it so with the tail because I've caught it I'll just grab my scissors. Oh, because it's been caught through all yeah. 15 of those stitches. It yeah. shouldn't work its way out again. There we go. I can just cut it off yeah. and uh, and then we're ready to go. So then the next part, so on the next, on the, um, for round two, so you've yeah. done your middle of your mandala, then you're going to start off with six chains. And this is the equivalent of three, three chains and one treble. And right. you'll see what I mean in a minute, because what okay. we're going to do is we're going to create the spokes oh, of well, like, a, yes. like a wheel in, yeah. the, in the middle. So this is where you've got uh, your six chains. And now I'm going to make a treble crochet stitch. And to make a treble crochet stitch, you wrap the yarn round the hook first. Yeah. I'm going to miss the first stitch and go into the second stitch under both parts of the stitch. So that the complete V. Yeah, yeah, so the V is lying on top of the hook. Yeah. And then yarn around the hook and pull it through the stitch. I've got three loops on my hook. Right. Yarn around the hook and pull through two. Yarn around the hook and pull through two. And that makes your treble oh, crochet yeah, stitch. And then it's three chains, two, three. And then yarn around the hook, you miss the stitch and you come into the next stitch. And, you and you're your missing next the stitch treble. because you're creating spokes away from each other. That's it. Well, yeah. what you're creating by missing a stitch and doing your three chains is you're creating another hole yep. into which you're going to make your stitches. Right. So, oh, okay. so you're, you're creating these spokes on your wheel in the middle of your mandala with the treble crochet uh -huh. stitches. Then coming over the top, you've got your three chains. So that's so, and you carry on until you've got eight of these right, travel I've got crochets. A quick question then. Yeah. Do you just carry on with that multicolored ball until yes. it changes colour? Yeah, you can do that, or if you wanted specifically each round to be a different colour, yeah. you would just cut it and then Stuff. move on to yeah. your next one. So here's one I've done earlier. Good. <laughs> Blue Peter style. And um, so, yeah, let's cut that, cut that off there. So then moving on to the next round. This is where you have a combination of, I'll just find the end of this, there we go. Are you chatting? Oh, okay. So I'm just working from the other side of the, of oh, the okay. ball so of the wall. Oh, okay, so it changes colour. Yes, yeah. Okay, so what, what I'm, um, for round, which round are we on? Round uh, three, we're going to be working into these big chain spaces here. Oh, okay. And then creating the kind of petals 
of the middle of the of the mandala. Okay. So to do that, I'll show you how to Does do. Does it matter where you start? It doesn't matter where you start. The pattern says to start where you left off because you don't. I've broken the yarn here, but right. um, but you uh, you don't on the actual pattern. Right. So I'm just going to join join the yarn there. Okay. So the pattern says to do one chain to start off with. And then into, and again, just one, sorry, just one chain. Then. One so you're not chain, raised, making any height no, or anything. no. This is this is just one chain to start off with, yeah. and then again, I'm going to be working into this big chain space here, yeah. but laying the yarn over the top of those stitches. So again, I'm going to crochet them in so as I go. So this is to stop any tying off or sewing in at the yes, end. Yes, yeah, it? yeah. And everybody hates sewing in, especially if yeah. you've got lots of different changes of colours. Yeah. So we're going to start off with a double crochet. So just like before, we go straight in, um, pull, the, pull a loop round, two loops on our hook, yarn around the hook, pull through two loops. Now the next stitch is a half treble. And a half treble is again, yarn around the hook first, into the, into the chain space, pull up a loop, and you've got three loops on your hook. Right. Then yarn around the hook, and instead, as with a treble, you'd pull through two and then pull through two. With a half treble, you pull through all three. Okay, but you didn't go through the big hole to begin with. Yes, yes, oh, you I did. did. Yes, yeah. Oh, I so, that bit. so you go yarn around the hook. So the next one is three trebles all into this big right, chain. Okay. Yeah. yeah, chain. I'm calling it a chain space, mm -hmm. but it is a big, a big hole. Big hole. Okay. Yeah. So yarn around the hook and in for my first treble. Pull through two loops pull through two loops, yarn around the hook, and again into that chain space, pull through two and pull through two. And this is the third, three loops, pull through two, pull through two. And then we go back to a half treble, so yarn around the hook into the middle, pull through three, so you've got three loops, and then yarn around the hook and pull through all three. Right. And then the final stitch into this chain space is a double crochet. So we just pull through one loop, and pull through two. Okay, so, so on the instructions, does it give us it in writing as well as in it pictures? It does, yes. So you have got uh, the chart, and the chart is a, a visual representation uh -huh. of each of the stitches in the mandala. And uh, but it also does include the written instructions Brilliant. for those people that prefer yeah. um, the written instructions. I think I would till I got used to it. I think I'd want it written down. Yeah. And, and then you can almost sort of check it off stitch by stitch. Yes. If you're taking it really slowly, mm -hmm. then you just yeah go um, stitch by stitch. So then um. you just repeat that pattern of stitches in each of the chain spaces okay. as you're going round. So you double, then your half treble. Then your three trebles, one, two, three, and then your half treble, and then your double. Okay. So you don't need to do any stitches on top of the treble crochet stitches, you just move straight on to, to the to, next to big the next space. Hole. Big space. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So there we go. Ta -da! And then you do that three different times, do you? So, or do you make more stitches? So you do the, exactly the same as those combination of stitches all the way around in the circle until you get to the first one that you made. And uh -huh. then you do a slip stitch into the first together. stitch and that closes it together. And then you can join a new colour yeah. or continue with your self-striping. Because I suppose it looks completely different. If you do self-stripy, it just changes when it fancies, so it yes. could change halfway through a round. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and you could have the petals that are, you know, lots of different colours mm. on the petals. So, yes, yeah, it's, it's whatever you, whatever you'd like to okay, do. Okay, so that's the first round of petals that we've done. So there. yeah, so the second round of petals is that more stitches. It is now. What you have to do in order to create your 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 second row. So in this one, it would be the white petals here. Uh -huh. You need to do some chain stitches to create those spaces. So oh, okay. I'll show you how to do that now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to join again, join your yarn. So it's a beginner kit, but actually it's teaching you lots of different, even yes. though you're keeping the, the actual stitches down to a minimum, it's how, like doing a whole loop of chain stitches or you're doing yep. a treble or whatever. Like yeah, that. It, well, it's, it's learning the very basic stitches, the yeah. stitches that are sort of the foundation of crochet and, um, and then using them in different ways and in yeah. different combinations to come up with this effect. Okay, so 
with the next round, what we're doing is we're creating the spaces into which we're going to be then putting our hooks for the next round of, okay. um, of stitches. And it's really easy here. It's just six chain stitches. Now, I would say make your chain stitches quite loose. Don't, quite often, if people are chain, making the chain stitches with a small hook, they can be quite tiny. Right, yeah. But you need to make sure that your six chain stitches stretches across oh, the yes, top. Oh, yes, to be the length of that, yeah. Yeah, over the top. And then in between these two double crochet stitches that you made on the previous round, you're going to put your hook in between those stitches, mm -hmm. catch the yarn and pull it through, and that's where you make, I'm just checking, a double crochet stitch. Uh -huh. So a double crochet stitch there, and then six chains, one, two, three, four, five, six... And then again into the space between the double crochet stitches, you're going to make another double crochet. Uh -huh. And so that that then creates these these gaps here, yeah. into which you then make your next round of petals. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and then it just repeats. So right. so for the um, the mandalas that are on the on the wall between um, behind me, if you. Yeah, that's it, behind John and behind me. That one's yes, behind yeah. you and this one's behind me. You can then just carry on with the pattern and make it bigger and bigger and bigger. Keep going, just keep going. And these are both on hula hoops. So oh, these wow. are on hula hoops and they're just uh, crocheted onto the hula hoop by just doing a really big long chain and then coming over the top of the hula hoop and catching it and wow. uh, um, doing a double crochet and then another big long chain and coming around and catching it. So it's, it's a really versatile pattern that once you've made one and sewn it on your bag or, you know, whatever you, or whatever, it, yeah. or put it on an embroidery hoop or whatever, then you could, you know, you so could, just could just, make if it you bigger. Just pop, go to yours. So I've done, yep. we've done the three rows of petals. I just can we see um, Helen's from right? So then the, the next one, the, the kind of mine's purple. What's yours? The next one, yeah, white. Yeah, now go to go, the next one of the solid one after three lots of petals. So this one, yeah, next one, this one. That's just is that just trebles? And so that is just trebles. That's just then uh, in the pattern, you just you do your chains, and then instead of making your petal shape, you just okay, do, do trebles along the, cha along in the, the chain in those spaces and then so, the next one and then the next one is trebles into, into the, the stitches the below yes yeah. with an increase right. because obviously, obviously you want to make it flat yeah because otherwise so, it's start curving up like a bowl yeah. wouldn't they? and the guide tells you all uh gives you some really good tips about how to make sure that your mandalas are flat brilliant the other thing of course you can do at the end of it is block it and I think you've got some really good blocking boards, haven't you? For yeah, so the blocking boards would be really useful to once you've got your mandala, um, you know, finished. You then can attach it onto the blocking board, mm -hmm. wet it, and then pin it out and just leave it to dry. And then it sort of gives it a nice. Do you ever smooth. use a steamer to do your blocking? Because we you had can. a steamer yesterday, and the lady said she did her blocking yes, using the steamer. Yeah. I've not heard of. No, that. I know, I know. Cara Libertson, she uh, she's got a really good blocking. Um, video that right. that she demonstrates how to use a steamer. Oh, okay. So Brilliant. so yeah, whether it's steam or for me, I just dunk it in cold water. You know, give it a good even spin it on a spin setting in the washing I'll machine. Get rid of all the yeah, excess, yeah, and then put it out on the blocking board, pin it into place, and uh, yeah, and then it, it just the stitches just sort of relax and sort of uh, smooth out. Brilliant. So this was the beginner kit that we had. What you get in that is you get the calico, I presume it's calico, isn't it? Calico bag. You get your four balls of yarn. You do get your crochet hook and you do get all your instructions. And you, there's enough yarn in there to make the floral one and the plain one as well. Uh, £24.99. pence. We do need to move on to these because they're very popular. The daisy, more so than the sunflower. Yeah. There's lots of the daisy one gone. So, uh, sh uh, should we just, I'll, I'll remind you, I'll remind you. So this is the daisy kit here. So that's what you're going to make. You get all the yarn for that and you get the, the, the florist's wreath wire thing. You get enough yarn in there to make the bumblebee and the, butter, uh, the, the butterflies and the actual, oh, there you go, and the actual. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dream catcher itself. That's the daisy one. And we've also got it in the sunflower one. There you go, there's the sunflower one. And this one does have the yarn in it, the wool in it to do the butterfly and the bumpy as well. 
Just someone was too lazy to make them. That was all. <laughs> but you do get the, uh, the and all the instructions. Everything twenty four ninety nine. Okay, right. Let's get on with these now because the, the the technique is absolutely identical. It's just choosing the colour, isn't it? That's right. That's right. So so the pattern is exactly the same yeah. whether you're making the sunflower sunflower or the daisy. So if you make uh, if you get the daisy kit and then you want to make a sunflower and you've got yellow and black wool at home, yeah. then you know you you can Make use the same pattern. So um, so yes, it it isn't. I wouldn't say it was a beginner pattern, but it is an easy pattern. Okay. So it is if you've grasped the basics of you know your double crochet, treble, and half treble stitches, then you can definitely move on to this Brilliant. one. Okay. So, um, so what I thought I would demonstrate is how to do the middle of the... Um, well, it's very move, dark, that one. I'll it? move that one out of the way. Yeah. The, the middle of the... Um, there you go. Okay. Of both of the daisy and the, the sunflower, mm -hmm. because this is a different stitch. So this is called a two treble cluster stitch. Right. So I thought I would demonstrate just the beginning round of, um, of, of the daisy, and then you'll be able to see how to do the, the two treble cluster stitch. Okay. And which the is petals, a bit of a mouthful. are they very really complicated? And then the petals, again, well, I think I probably will have time, yeah, to yeah. then demonstrate how to make the petals. Perfect. I'll so, show that then. And then if I still have time, oh. I'll make the bee and the butterfly. Okay. <laughs> so, and also explain how we get them onto the wire thing as well. Yes. Brilliant. Yes. Okay. So no, that's, be so, quiet and then right. we'll get something. Okay. So just like the mandala that we that we were just making, you start off with six chains uh -huh. and join with a with a slip stitch. So six chains, hook in the first of those chains yarn around the hook and pull through the stitch and the loop on your hook and that's your slip stitch uh -huh. yeah and then we're going to do two chains and then uh, a two treble cluster stitch so to do a two two ugh, you can't even say put it. my teeth in two treble cluster stitch yeah. or a special stitch uh -huh. <laughs> you go yarn around the hook into the middle catch the yarn from behind pull it through you've got three loops on your hook yeah. yarn around the hook pull through two now, usually, if you were doing a treble, cl treble crochet stitch, you would be um, then finishing off the stitch by pulling through both of those, yeah. um, those loops. But instead, we're going to wrap the yarn back around the hook, yeah. go back into the middle of that um, center ring. You've then got four oh. loops on your hook, yarn around the hook and pull through two of those loops. And you've got three loops on your hook, yarn around the hook, and pull through all three loops. And that is called a two treble cluster stitch. Right. And you can see that it's sort of a bit bulkier and a bit, you know, the idea was that I wanted to make it look like uh, the organic sort of middle of a, of a flower. Yeah. And, um, and certainly with the black, brown, uh, it kind of has got that sort of seedy, sort of, not seed, <laughs> not seedy, that's the wrong I word. I know, that's the wrong word, like, mean like yeah, seed-like. Seed, yeah. seed like yes, seed -like. yeah. So carrying on then, we yeah. need to do six of these two treble cluster right. stitches. Just do what, yeah, do one again. So yeah, so you join, so you move around the circle by doing a chain and then your next stitch. So yarn around the hook, into the middle, catch the yarn, and I've got three loops on my hook. Uh -huh. Yarn around the hook, pull through two, and then stop, yarn around the hook, go back into the middle of the ring, catch the yarn, four loops on my hook, yeah. yarn around the hook, pull through two, and then I've got three loops on my hook, yarn around the hook, and pull through all three loops. Okay. And then a chain, and then the next one. So you're, you're like making two halves of a treble crochet stitch and then joining them together. Right. And I know that in some, and then a chain. Um, and then some designers might call this a two, uh, cr two treble together or, yeah, yeah so, um, and you can do numerous numbers. So you can have a three cr treble cr cl uh, three treble cluster stitch. Yeah, you chose this hobby, <laughs> not me. <laughs> oh, you know, in my head, it sounds perfect. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay, so we need six of them. So one, two, three, four, five. I need to do one more. And okay, and then a chain, and then join with a slip stitch uh -huh. into the top of those chains that you made. Uh -huh. And join it in here. 
Okay, so that's the very middle of your daisy. Right. And then the next round, you need to increase from six treble cluster stitches to 12 treble cluster stitches. Right. So in order to, for it to be flat. So we're going to start again with two chains and then moving on to the very first chain space. So you made a chain and that's created a space underneath uh -huh. it. So we're going to do two treble cluster stitches in here, but with a chain in between. So that's my first, and then I do a chain, and then I do the next one in the same chain space. Right. So for anybody that does amigurumi, they'd be very familiar with oh, this method of increasing. I got sent an amigurumi chameleon this week. Oh, <gasps> really? It's beautiful, oh, wow. it's so lovely. I've got oh. a spiky plant next to the telly and he's holding on like that watching the telly now. Oh, fantastic. <coughs> Mr. Parsons from Secret Life of the Zoo, you see. Oh, right. oh I love that. I love that program. You see, he started last night. Yes, I saw it. Oh, have you seen it? I haven't seen it. I've seen it when I go home tonight. Uh, okay, so then moving on to the next uh, chain space. <clears throat> I'm going to do two in here uh -huh. with a chain in between. So this is my first one. And then a chain. And then... There we go, the second one. And you get into a rhythm yep. of going yarn around the hook and into the But this you are the literally chain space. doing the same thing over round and, over. and round again, yep. but just making each round twice yep. the size of the one before. And you don't really need to count because you can see where you are on yeah. the on the circle and uh, and each time you're doing a chain in between and then you're going all the way around. Now you could use a stitch marker if mm -hmm. you if you needed a stitch marker just to mark the beginning um, of your of your round. Yeah, stitch okay, markers. I'm not taking up any time because I can see the hour whizzing by. You see, not to go onto the oh, petals I know, and the bumblebee. I know. There we go. Well, I'm I'm right the way round. I'm just doing the last one, and then joining with a slip stitch. Oh, now, if you've got the daisy in your basket, you need to check out. There's not going to be enough to go around. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm watching okay. and enjoy. Oh, it's Carol. Carol, who made my, uh, my Mr. Parsons. Aww. She's made my Amaguru. Amaguru. Oh, oh, fantastic. Mr. Parsons, he's lovely. Right. So, so basically, they're, they're the first two rounds. Uh -huh. um, and the next round, instead of doing two in each chain space, you do one and then two in the next one one in the next one, two in the next one. So it's you, so you're increasing, but if you carried on and did two in each chain space, it would start to curl up or it would start to go frilly. Oh, oh okay, frilly. So it's not double. It's no, not double, but the though. pattern explains exactly yeah, how to do it and it does have a chart and written instructions. Brilliant. Okay. So, so how many rows are they? One, so there's only four two, rounds. Four, yeah, so four, four rounds. rounds. And um, so now what I'll do is I'll show you how to, to make the petals. Brilliant. We're swapping over now. We're swapping to the over, yeah. One. So I'll stick with the stick with the yellow, yeah. but joining it onto um, the sunflower middle. Right. So just joining the yarn in. Now you make these. Um, so you make these petals in two halves. So right. you do the first half, and because you're working in the round, you make all of the petals singly with. In one side, one side of them and then you pick up the back of the chain when you come around to do the second half okay, so brilliant. I can sh I'll show you how to do yeah, yeah. a couple of petals half this half of the petals and then, you'll come back. And then I'll move to the um, to the daisy and show you how to um, do the second half and attach it onto the brilliant. wire okay so we're going to start off with 14 chains I was going to say you need a lot of chains on yeah this so 14 chains but what I would say, everybody's tension is different. And you might find that the center of your, um, the, the middle of your flower is perhaps smaller than mine. Right. And therefore your chains might be smaller. So what, what at this stage, you, you measure against the wire ring. Oh, so course, you put yeah. So you put your middle in the middle of your wire ring and you make your 14 chains and you see whether it stretches right. to, the, to the top of the ring. To the full it, outside, yeah, if, outside ring. If, it is, if it's um, short, 
then you might want to put an extra couple okay. of... Okay, um, it's all right to uh, do that. Then. And it's completely all right to do that. So you can adjust the pattern according to your own tension. Brilliant. But I think, to be honest, I think 14, and it's really stretchy yeah. wool, so it will stretch anyway. So let me just count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and another one, 14. And then you're going to move along your chain stitches back towards the center of your flower. Uh -huh. So you miss the first chain and you go into the second chain and make a slip stitch. So you pull all the way through the stitch and the loop on your hook. Okay. Then your next stitch, and it's important to just do the back loop. So you're putting your hook in to just one of those loops of the chain stitch yeah. rather than both of them. So you put your hook into the one that is well, you at say the back. back one, you see the one on the top. So I've got the chain, yes, yeah, so I've yeah. got the chain towards me lying across my finger there. Yeah. I'm not going to put my hook into the one at the bottom yeah. or the one towards me, which would be, I would call the front loop. Yeah, yeah. I'm just putting it in the top one okay. or the back loop. So I've done my slip stitch and then a double crochet into the first one a half treble into the next one, and then 10 treble crochets all the way to the bottom. Okay. So then all the way down to the bottom. So if you then had to have extra um, chain stitches because it wasn't, you didn't think it was gonna reach the ring, you would then do more than 10 uh, treble stitches. Uh -huh. Alison Marion said she's got to go out now, but she absolutely loves your demos. She's oh. very sad to miss the end. Catch up later when you oh, get back. Oh, that's very kind. Thank you. Yeah, don't go out, Hannah says. <laughs> oh. Yeah, you can watch them back on YouTube, can't you? Yeah. Right. So I've come down to the bottom and then where my, where my centre is, and I'll try and make this clear so that you can see it, actually, it's that way around. You've got these big holes yeah. here, and so that's where you're going to make a double crochet stitch to join your petal to your, um, to your center, and you put your hook straight into that chain space there, okay. and you make a double crochet. And that then, you've got your half, half, a, petal. half a petal. So then you just carry on with your 14 chains, so you'd make the next one, with your 14 chains. Uh -huh. and well, you if, you, if you made the first one with like 16 or 17, you need to make them all yes, 16 or yeah, 17. Yeah, yeah, so jot it down on a piece of paper yeah. to just remind yourself how many you've done. Because the times when I've started a project and then adapted it a bit and then put it to one side. And forgotten that you've adapted forgotten, it. Yes, yeah. yeah, so write it down. So so that's basically how you do a heart, the half, yeah. the first half of your petal, right. okay? So now what I want to, to move on is for the second half yeah. of the petal. And so I've got here, now I made this one in, in different wool, uh, just so it was thicker, just so I could demonstrate it. Right, but this okay. is, this is um, the Pembrokeshire wool from my, from my aunt's sheep. So, right. Um, right, so I've just removed the stitch marker so I can put my hook into this loop uh, here. We're moving to the daisy kit now, but you really need to check out on your daisy because there's more people want it than we've got stock of. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> so you remember we did half, so the half the, um, that's the half that I've just demonstrated. Uh -huh. And you can see along here, this is the back of those chain stitches. Mm -hmm. So this is where we're going to be putting our hook for the second half. So you've gone all the way round and now you're picking up those um, those stitches from the back of the ch the original 14 chains. So we're going to do treble crochet stitches into the back. Okay. And you will see that they will line up with the other treble crochet stitches. Mm -hmm. So I'm going yarn around the hook into that chain stitch and. Now you've got the others already attached to the wire. Yeah, will, so will they be attached to the wire at this stage? No, I will show you because you make the second half of your, um, so you make the second half of your flower and then you attach it to the oh, ring. Oh, okay, so when you get to the last one, you will petal be Petal by like petal, you are now. yes, yeah. yeah. So I've made all of these yeah. full petals all the way around here, uh -huh. and I've only got three left. Right. So that then when you get to your final one, that's it. They're yeah. all attached, and, they're, um, and your dream catcher is finished. Yeah. 
Okay. Well, how, not quite, because you haven't got your bumblebee or your butterfly. No, that's true. But they're, they're How many minutes have we got of demo, please? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, time flies. So six minutes we've got of demo. Right. Just so, you know. so that's perfect for um, just crocheting to the top of this petal, and then I can show you how to attach it. Brilliant. Right, so you do 10 treble crochet stitches. Then when you get to the last three stitches, you then do your half, half treble. So let's see, so I've got one, two, three, four. So I know I've got to do a treble and then a half treble. Uh -huh. All the way through and then a double. And then with the slip stitch, which is your final stitch uh -huh. at the top of your petal, you're then this is how you join it onto right. the loop. So you have your yarn over the top of the ring yeah. so that it comes behind. You put your hook into the stitch, uh -huh. under the wire, catch the yarn and pull it all the way through. Oh, uh, OK. Then you move your yarn over the top. Yeah. And then to move on to the next petal, you need to make slip stitches all the way down the edge right. of those stitches. So we're going to make that So you've got two loops stitch. of the yarn over the wire holding yes. it in place. Yes, yes, yeah. two, two loops. And then, then you can work along those stitches with your slip stitches and slip stitches of no height whatsoever. No. So they, so it means that you can travel along the crocheted fabric to get to the point where you then want to make your next stitches. Uh -huh. So, but it does actually give with these petals, it gives a really nice um, texture. Well, it gives it kind of an edge. It does. It, like it gives it an edge, edge and um, it almost looks like like folded paper. Yeah. So with the with the chain in the middle, mm -hmm. that sort of sort of um, bends slightly, and then we're just going to come to the last. I've made my last slip stitch, but I'm actually going to put a slip stitch into that last double crochet stitch into there. Then I'm ready to move on to, to, the, next to the next one with my trebles. Brilliant. So then you just move around each time, moving around mm -hmm. in a circle, and there you get your, your petals and you join them on. Fantastic. Right, yeah. we've got two minutes left. Can we just explain about the bumblebee? I'll, I'll just explain. One. Yeah, so... We talked about amigurumi, yeah, and yeah. so amigurumi is uh, a method, it's a Japanese term for making stuffed toys. Right. And so you've got your, um, so you only use one stitch, and that's a double crochet stitch. Right. There are no turning chains, so you start off from the middle, and uh, you start with a, a magic ring. Right. And I think I demonstrated how I do my magic mm -hmm. ring on last month's show okay. that I was on. Um, and so you start in the middle and you do six stitches and then you increase to 12 stitches to 18 stitches. And all then this is in the instructions. Though, all is it? in yeah. the instructions. Mm -hmm. And then you have got your um, straight with no increases where you just change colour uh -huh. and then you're decreasing to its bottom. And then the wings Ooh. are just um, the same as the, as the middle. And where so, do you stuff it? How do you stuff it? And then you stuff it before you decrease your last round. Right. You stuff it into... Oh, OK. So then yeah. you do your last round you, pulling it in. Yeah, you can kind of, with your thumb, you sort of hold the stuffing in place yeah. and uh, and you decrease your stitches okay. uh, over and over. And, yeah, so that's how you make your, make your little bee. Thing. And then you can add it wherever you like. You can have them hanging down, maybe. Oh, no, Hannah was just saying yeah. she'd have him hanging you down. You can have them hanging down. You can have the butterflies, you know, on... If you had little floristry wire, you could have oh, them sticking yeah. up, and uh, and they, yeah. uh, we haven't got time to do it. But the butterfly is quite easy as well. The butterfly, <coughs> the butterfly is really easy because it is. It starts off with the middle of a granny square. Yeah. So if you make a granny square, it starts off with the middle, and then you've got your four. Uh, corner chain spaces and that's where you make the um, the wings of the butterfly. Christine so, says you're very talented Helen, it's lovely, you make a wonderful, would look wonderful on a cushion or a bag, well yes oh, exactly. Oh it would, yeah. It would. yeah. I suppose if you put it onto a bag you'd have to stitch the end of your petals down rather yeah. than crocheting. Yeah so you wouldn't have, if you didn't have a wire and I think there probably is enough wool in the kit to make two flowers uh -huh. so you could do one where you put it onto the floristry wire and one where you sewed it onto, onto, something, uh, onto else. something else. Brilliant. Yeah. When are you in next? 
I think September, middle of September. Middle of September. I won't say I'll be on my holidays. <laughs> Lying on a beach. But thank you very much. Oh, key rings. You make a key ring out of the bumblebees, Christine's saying. Right, thank you very much. Let me just quickly go through these then. So the beginner kit at the beginning of the show. Uh, you get everything you need, including the crochet hook. You get four, oh, it's right in there. Four random colours. Uh, which are all beautiful. You get your instructions and your crochet hook in there and you get the calico bag to attach it to afterwards. You get all the instructions in a chart and in words. There it is, £24.99. Then I've got the sunflower, which is uh, in here. You get the wire, you get the lovely gold and yellow, you get the brown for the middle and then you get the lovely lilacs and everything for the butterflies in there as well. £24.99 and you get the instructions and you get the florist. There's only nine left. There's only nine of those left. That's it. And they will go. They will go because people are what we found on Yarn Lane is people wait till the end of the demonstration and then they check out. So they will all be gone by the end of today. And then the sunflower. Well, the sunflower has been very, very popular. I just need to handle put the graphs in. I'll better tell you about where we are uh, figures wise on this. Twenty four ninety nine. Right, loads, they're going to sell out. Okay, there's four left, but there's loads of people now adding it to their basket. So <laughs> if you add it to your basket, check out straight away. You don't want to miss out on that. And the next yarn lane will be, uh, what day? Oh, I know when it is. No, there's two, there's two. We're doing Christmas Critters on Friday and we're doing Christmas Jumpers on Saturday. So Catherine Wright on Saturday and I forgot the name. Claire, Claire. Claire's being on Friday to do your Christmas critters. Anyway, thank you very much indeed, Helen. Thank you for watching. I'll see you tomorrow morning on Sewing Street. Don't forget, it's Christmas tomorrow. Bye.